Welcome back, audience. This is the button press playing Super Metroid. Thank you for joining me. This is episode three. We had uh, some kind of unfortunate something happen between the last episode and this one, so I have to re I had to catch up. And uh, I find myself with too few missiles to continue, so if you'll bear with me, I'm just going to refuel. Uh, ought to be some guys up here I can kill. Yeah. Oh, one more. Will it be you? No. Will it be you? Bingo! Alright, on our way. In here I think there's an expansion. That's gonna make things uh, a fair bit easier. This is new. If you're not already familiar, this is a, uh, a spawn point for little buggy things. These things will just spawn constantly over and over and over and over, and if you're ever down on anything like missiles, then you can just sit around and kill them. Of course, the more missile expansions we pick up, the less likely that's going to be necessary, but you don't want to take chances. It's not worth it. Now we can head down, avoiding weird invincible rocket monsters, into, I think, the pink zone? Yeah! Welcome to the pink zone of Brinstar. It is pink, uh, or... It's like old furniture pink. I'm not sure if this is a, if this is a kind of mold, or... I know Brinstar tends to be, you know, pretty plant-based, so maybe these are petals? I suppose I could understand either one. Either way, Samus really shouldn't take off her helmet, just in case. It turns out, actually, that um, according to a manga that I had seen once, I don't know how, if this is strictly canon, but uh, Samus was given this power suit that she's wearing by the Chozo uh, in order for her to be able to survive on this planet. So maybe, maybe this area is part of the reason. Ooh, this one's just sitting out there. Also, not terribly well hidden if you're observant. You can bomb this area here. Jump down there. Well, fall, really. And this is the charge beam. Well, actually, more, more accurately, it's the beam charger. Uh, you hold your shooty button, and then release, and that's what it accomplishes. A charge shot will... Um, I think it'll cause about as much damage as a missile for the time being. Once we get our first upgrade, which will be fairly soon, uh, it'll start doing more damage than a missile. But uh, when you're facing a boss, it's still going to be a good idea to stick with missiles. You'll be able to shoot more of them in the same amount of time. Charge weapon is the... Um, it's the type of weapon you want to use if you want to time your shots properly. It's not an all-the-time kind of useful. Let me save been a little while. It hasn't been long in this game, but in games like these, time passes like dog years. If it's been 10 minutes, you'll lose an hour. <laughs> it's also worth saving, because I know what's coming up. I always wished, back when I was young and playing this game, that uh, one day they're going to invent save stations in real life. Could you imagine? Want to know what it's like to go skydiving without a parachute? Yeah, sure, let's go find out! Want to go high-five a bear? Awesome, I did that last week, but I'll do it again! Guess I'm gonna have to take care of these guys. Yeah. These guys, I guess, are worth the missiles. I guess in my age I've decided to hell with it. I'll just spend them, save myself some frustration. Alright, here we are with Spore Spawn, a mini-boss. He looks as indestructible as he genuinely is. <laughs> uh, we've learned this uh, during one of the other previous mini-boss battles, that we can shoot projectiles and uh, and get health pickups or, rechar or recharges. Charges. So uh, basically we can just sit here and enjoy that until he takes a breath. Shown here. There's no other backstory. 
Uh, you can see that um, the door has locked behind us. I don't know if it's this plant monster that did that. <laughs> Some jerk might have done that. Anyway, the door is green. Now, we don't have currently the thing that we need in order to open that. That's the super missile. Um, something that I quite like about this game, and something I'm sure I'm going to just keep mentioning over and over, is how I enjoy that the design um, tends to favor... I, I have no idea if this is an actual thing in video game design, but I call it packaging. And um, that's when you learn... That's when uh, an area is formed around the pickup, so that by the time you leave with the item, say in this case the super missile, you will know how to use it very well by the time you leave with it. There's no need for text, no need for explanation, you just figure it out, because you won't be able to leave without it, <laughs> and then you get to continue your game probably stronger than had they just written you a paragraph and, you know, forced you to read it. Shouldn't be that much longer, this guy's getting pretty dark. Such memorable music this in this fight. Really makes me feel like I'm, I'm stuck in a trap. In like, a Saturday morning cartoon villain is cackling madly while he's heading towards me to exact his revenge or something. I've been watching too many of those Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> I think it's one more hit. There it is. Something a little creepy about this boss. He dies, clearly, you can see the change in color, but the music still plays. It's a little unsettling, because usually, you know, almost in every game, when the boss dies, the music changes to something maybe a little more victorious or something not quite so intense. Not here. Uh, free fall! Screw you, fall damage! <laughs> There's none of that in this game. Alright. Super misses. Can't have a Super Nintendo game with super in the title without super missiles or something super in it. It's so... Ugh. <laughs> it would be so Nintendo era to do that. Alright. These super missiles, much like the regular missiles, I never use them. See how powerful they are? They're much more rare than the regular missiles, so I, I avoid using them at all costs. There's even a boss battle where it's a really bad idea to use them. Usually they are, you know, boss battle material. Um, yeah, you only get about 50 of them if you go chasing after every missile expansion, or super missile expansion, pardon me. Um, so you're really not going to end up with many. This is a super missile door here. And now we're going to go on our way. It's kind of a spoiler to say it, but we're going towards Norfair. Ah yeah, these, this thing. It may not be super obvious, but if you keep going in this direction, this over here, um, if you leave this room in that direction, this gate will close and you won't be able to come back. So if you want to go do any little exploration side missions, now's the time. Of course, I wouldn't say that now is a, is a very good time for exploration. We don't really have... Uh, anything new in terms of mobility, so we aren't going to really profit from going back. We may as well just wait until we do pick up something, which isn't... I keep saying this, it's not very far along, but, um... Oh yeah, this place. I like this place. It really gives me, like, a ship's power core vibe. Like... Oh, I don't know. I wonder what the backstory of this place is. I wonder if it's not like a gigantic sprinkler system for Brinstar. All that plant life probably needs it. Okay, that 
orange door needs a power bomb. And don't bomb this block. See, look at the bottom left, sorry, right corner. There's a little flash there, right? There, see? Yeah, there. Yeah, you don't want to bomb that. There's actually a monster inside, and it acts quite a lot like a Metroid. It's just gonna suck your energy. And the only way to get it off, to kill it, uh, is to use ball bombs. And by that point, you might have lost a fair bit of, of energy. Oh yeah, this is a uh, energy recharge station. Not all that necessary. Uh, anyway, I think this is a good spot to uh, to end this episode. Stay tuned, folks. See you in a bit. Thanks for joining me.